the South African Department of International Relations and Cooperation, DERCO, has indicated that is working to assess the damage done after the South African High Commission in the Nigerian city of Lagos came under attack. The High Commission was forced to shut its doors on Wednesday 4 September 2019, after protesters targeted the premises. While the extent of damage was yet to be determined, it is understood that a vehicle was vandalized during the demonstrations. Some South African businesses operating in Nigeria, including MTN, ShopRite, and MultiChoice, have closed down until further notice. It is understood that the attacks were in retaliation to the xenophobic attacks and mass looting in South Africa, when numerous shops owned by foreign nationals have been ransacked and looted. The Nigeria police force planned to boost security at high commissions and embassies, as well as foreign businesses in Nigeria, in the wake of violence targeted at South African-owned companies. On Wednesday 4 September 2019, Nigeria indicated that it would boycott the World Economic Forum, currently taking place in Cape Town, intensifying a diplomatic row after a series of deadly attacks on foreigners in South African cities. The withdrawal of Nigerian Vice President, Yemiosin Bajo, from the World Economic Forum gathering, has cast a cloud over initiatives to boost intra-African trade. He was scheduled to address a panel on Universal Energy Access on Thursday, 5 September 2019. The South African President, Cyril Ramaphosa, on a charm offensive to attract $100 billion of new investment, tried to limit fallout from the violence, which has rekindled memories of previous deadly attacks on foreigners, which also led to reprisals on South African businesses abroad. The South African Police Service claimed they have made almost 300 arrests, while people across the continent have protested and voiced their anger on social media. The President of Rwanda, Paul Kagame, and the President of Malawi, Peter Mutrika, also pulled out of the conference, but their governments did not give any official reason for their decision. The Foreign Minister of Zimbabwe, Sibisi Somoyo, told Reuters, the attacks were unfortunate, in an environment where we are looking forward to regional integration and cooperation. There are a significant number of Zimbabweans living in South Africa, and they along with Somalians and Nigerians, have formally borne the brunt of attacks on foreigners in South Africa. Earlier, a Ghanaian parliamentarian had called for the relocation of the Pan-African Parliament away from South Africa, and also demanded that President Cyril Ramaphosa be stripped of his pending position as the chairman of the African Union in 2020. It is unclear as to what ignited the latest attacks, which mainly targeted shops owned by African migrants, but unemployment is high in South Africa, and many South Africans feel frustrated with limited economic opportunities. The current unemployment rate in South Africa stands at 29%, according to Statistics South Africa, but this figure is quite vague, because there is a question of employability. Many unemployed South Africans are unemployed because they do not have any prerequisite employable skills and qualifications, and so in actual fact they are unemployable. It can be proved that there are many job opportunities in South Africa, both in government departments and private companies, but many black South Africans are unable to help themselves to these opportunities because they do not possess the prerequisite skills, qualifications, and experience to take up these jobs. Many of these opportunities exist in the areas of engineering, medicine, aeronautics, finance and accounting, actuarial sciences, mathematics and physical sciences education and research, computer sciences, software development and programming, and many more. Please check in the description box below for the links to the sources of this report. Thanks for watching. Please comment, like, share and subscribe.